What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Vrach Report. It's time to talk about the Toronto Raptors because there has been a lot of finger pointing towards the front office, in particular, Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster, as to what their direction is, what the team is doing, their lack of moves, so some of the moves they should have made. So for today's video, I'm going to be breaking that down. So if you're ready to watch, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Now, as you guys know, I do like to give out shout outs on my channel and the shout out for today's video goes out to Amit. So Amit, thank you so much for supporting this channel through your likes and comments. It is very much appreciated. Now let's talk about the Toronto Raptors because there's been a lot of questions. Where, t where direction is this team going into? What is the front office doing? Should they have traded OG and Anobi? But no one really speaks about the alternate moves. Now, obviously, the Raptors did just lose Fred Van Vliet in free agency. The inability to trade Damian Lillard has fueled more fire and thrown more fuel towards the front office and a lot more finger pointing as to what this team is really doing. Should they have pulled the trigger for Damian Lillard? Ultimately, I did tweet out before even news came out that I think Damian Lillard ultimately did not want to come to the Raptors. That was the reason. It seemed like that was the reason, although there's not 100% clarification on that. But I want to talk about the Raptors because there's been a lot of talk about what they've done post-championship. They lost Kawhi Leonard. They let Danny Green go. They let pretty much Serge Ibaka, Marcus Gasol. Now Fred Van Vliet walked as well. But no one really speaks about the alternate. Of course, you weren't going to trade Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard in the middle of the season. So it's almost as if fans make up this narrative in their own head to justify their hatred or their criticism. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to criticize the front office. I actually did it way before it seems like it became a trend on social media and on YouTube as well. If you watch my videos for a while, you know I've gone on a rant after the Raptors were eliminated by the 76ers, where they clearly, clearly needed a traditional big man. And I have been stating that for quite some time as well. But we'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. But in terms of alternate moves the Raptors could have made, when we talk about criticism, would, have, would it have been better for the Raptors to trade Fred Van Vliet at the NBA trade deadline for a second round pick or Pat Connaughton, whoever we were getting from Milwaukee Bucks. If that was the trade that went down, a lot of fans would have been vivid with Masai Ujiri saying that he's lost his touch and that's all we could get for Fred. Now, obviously, we knew the Houston Rockets teams like the Orlando Magic were lurking in Fred Van Vliet's, you know, free agency as well as teams that could potentially steal him. And the Raptors did try. People need to remember that we did come into the final negotiation period when the ultimately before he signed with the Rockets that he they were offering him four years willing to go up to 120 million whatever the deal was but ultimately look you have to take the reality it is what it is and if you talk about alternates what was the alternate would it have been better had the Raptors signed Fred to a three-year 40 plus million dollar no it would not have and this is something I've been saying for quite some time I think the problem with the Toronto Raptors is actually role definition. Now with Fred gone, I think it makes it a little bit better because you got Scotty Barnes as the two, three, some nights. It depends on OG wanting a bigger role as well. I still think they need to figure out that role definition and where OG especially fits into that as well. Pascal is obviously the clear number one as well, but there is no alternate moves. Like even Serge Ibaka, when we talk about that, would it, been, would it have been better for the Raptors had they signed Serge Ibaka to a reported $15, $17 million three seasons ago to a three-year deal? We saw how much he went downhill after they let him go. Look, I was the biggest Serge Ibaka fan, and that probably upset me probably after Kawhi Leonard as the biggest surprise of him leaving the Raptors. But the alternate was, look, you paid him a lot of money, and then he would have been injured or not being able to produce the same way. Marcus saw, we saw what he did. So I think... Ultimately, I'm not saying the Raptors front office doesn't deserve enough criticism or doesn't deserve criticism. I think criticism is fair. I just don't like when narratives are created. Now, I did go through a list of things, the Raptors moves and players they have drafted before the championship and after the championship, because that has been the narrative about the Raptors not being able to make any moves post-championship era as well. So I made a list of things and I want to discuss that as well. Now, I wanted to quickly talk about free agents signed under Masai before the championship and after the championship. And as you see there, Tyler Hansborough, DJ Augustine, Damari Carroll, Luis Scola, Bismack Biongo, Biombo, excuse me, Greg Monroe were some of the most notable names he signed during his tender before they ultimately won the championship. Now, you look at after the championship, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, DeAndre Bembry, Otto, Potter, Otto Porter, excuse me, Jr., Jalen McDaniels, Dennis Schroeder, uh, Garrett Temple as well were some of the notable names. You could still, definitely throw Stanley Johnson on there as well. But you look at these two lists, like it's not that bad as people are making it out to be. Dennis is probably their biggest signing ever up until they sign, you know, 
They signed Otto Porter last season, which could have been the biggest or probably one of the better players they have signed during Masai Ujiri's tender. And then you got, you know, you got Dennis who signed with the Raptors as well this season. So, I mean, it's not the greatest. Look, a lot of players have stated they don't want to come to Toronto and it is what it is, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be when you compare these two lists. And even taking a look at the next list here, players Masai Ujiri drafted. DeLon Wright was drafted 20. Jakob Pertl was drafted 9th. Pascal Siakam was drafted 27th. OG Nanobi was drafted 23rd. And after the championship, the Raptors have drafted Scotty Barnes, Delano Banton 46th, Christian Coloco 33rd, Grady Dick 13th overall. So look, I'm not saying the Raptors haven't been able to develop players. They definitely have not been. Now, obviously, I didn't include guys like Malachi Flynn in there because, you know, he's selecting 28th and he's not doing so hot. These are some of the names I wanted to highlight that were probably considered the best picks, you know, under Masai Ujiri, both before and after the championship. But I know when people look at this list, you know, you get really excited. We talk about Norman Powell's. The Raptors were able to draft him in the second round and develop him. But people seem to forget. They also drafted DeAndre, DeAndre Daniels, 37th overall as well. He didn't pan out. Not every player that you draft is automatically going to be someone that turns out great just because the Raptors drafted him. There are great prospects like Norman Powell, but for every one of him, there are also guys like DeAndre Daniels and Bruno Caboclo as well, who just didn't work out. And we knew he was a project as well. But all I'm saying is, look, the Raptors, have they made some questionable moves? Yes. It's not as bad as people are making out to be in terms of free agency, players drafted. And I've been stating this for quite some time. Ultimately, I do think it's Nick Nurse for not playing some of these guys. I mean, hell, the rookie of the year seems like he regressed a little bit under Nick Nurse. What does that say about the coach? I love Nick Nurse. I'm very appreciative of what he did for the Raptors in helping us win that championship. But look, Ultimately, he wasn't a developmental coach. And that is something I've stated many times after, you know, Dwayne Casey got fired. I said, look, the Raptors are great, but it's particularly the last two seasons. No one's really developing there. So that was a big issue. And ultimately, when you take a look at the Raptors too, guys, before Masai Ujiri came in, like you look at his first season, they made the playoffs. I mean, they have the second most winningest record in the NBA behind Golden State during his tender. 41 and 41 isn't the greatest, obviously, given the Raptors' expectations, but it's not as bad as people are making out to be. Obviously, the Raptors should have done much better last season. They didn't, and I think Fred leaving was ultimately a blessing in disguise. When we talk about free agents leaving, look, free agents left. Yes, Fred left, but you got Dennis and Jillian McDaniels in there. So ultimately, you sacrifice a starter, and there's a lot of questions if Dennis will start as well. But you got a little bit more depth in that. You let go of Fred Van Vliet. You sacrifice his money. You got you freed up some roster spot as well, as well as some money and some more touches for other guys. So it's not as bad as people are making out to be. Even when we signed Dennis, I said this. This was an excellent signing. So ultimately, is the front office free of criticism? Absolutely not. I think their biggest mistake was not signing a legitimate free, a big man after they lost Serge Ibaka and Marcus Gasol as well. And no matter how much you say, it's modern NBA and you can play switchable defense. You ultimately should have big men on the roster that are able to defend. And that is something I have constantly stated since the Tampa season. And that was by far Masai's biggest mistake. And I think they should have acquired Jakob Pertl much, much earlier. But just overall, my thoughts on this is when you look at the Raptors, when Raptors, you know, uh, Masai Ujiri took over the Raptors, they were at the bottom. And you saw the success slowly climb. You know, you obviously see the highlights like undrafted guys like Fred developed, Norman guys developed. But there are a lot of other guys they drafted as well that didn't work out. It's just we view success in a flash and we expect the same results much sooner rather than later because of the success the Raptors achieved. But it was a steep climb uphill. The Raptors failed a lot in the playoffs. And I know they haven't lived up to expectations in the last several seasons after the championship. But look. Ultimately, I think Masai has developed a reputation around the NBA for being someone that gets great trades done. And he was able to do this when he wasn't as well known in the NBA. So that's all I want to say. I think he's much more well known, obviously, in the NBA now. And it's a lot harder to do trades, you know, considering you don't want to give up first round picks. And also, I just think the way the Raptors roster is set up, like, do you really want to give up OG Gary Trent, Scotty Barnes or even Pascal right now? No, I don't think so. I think you need to figure out, you know, what their ceiling is. Scotty is obviously going to be good. But, you know, you guys like OG, you want to develop Gary a little bit more. I think he's got a little bit more, more ways to go in, things that he can do a little bit better. So ultimately, I think the issue here with the Raptors roster is that they got so many good pieces. They cannot trade away like guys like, like OG, Gary. I know regardless of how you may feel, I think they want to work with those guys a little bit more, get them to their ceiling and then trade them. Whereas before you had, you know, Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan. 
and then you had Serge Ibaka, and then you had a bunch of good role players around them that was easy to trade and picks as well. So I think the Raptors put themselves in a little bit of a weird position where there's not enough role definition. They've got too many guys that want the ball as well. Ultimately, I do think they're going to shine under Darko, but that's just my opinion. Now, I'm not saying the front office doesn't deserve criticism. They absolutely do, but I just don't think... I hate narratives. I hate when people create narratives and kind of run with it, and that seems to be the narrative because every move that Masai makes from now on is going to be under a microscope. Look, could he have traded Ojin and Obi? Absolutely. But those three first-round picks from Memphis were late 20s. Do we really want to draft more guys from the 25th to the 30th spot? Just for OG and Anobi, one of the hardest positions to find in the NBA in 3 and D. Absolutely not, guys. So that is my thoughts on this. I do think the management can do a little bit better. I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying they shouldn't receive criticism. I just do not like narratives being spun the way they are. Anyways, that will be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And there's no trivia question, but if you do want a shout out, just let me know in the thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on this video as well. So that will be it. Thank you once again. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.